I started on the project last year, 2011. Um, when I came to Whitechapel, I, I don't know the Whitechapel area that well. I didn't know um, much about the history of the area um, or about the communities in the area. Um, so um, I didn't really know what direction the project uh, might take in terms of subject matter or, or people that, that, that I might work with or collaborate with. A very important link in terms of meeting with people was through talking with uh, Ansar Ahmedullah from, from the Shadanata Trust. The Shadanata Trust is a very small community group uh, set up in the year 2000 to work with young people um, to inform them about the history and the heritage of the uh, Bengali community in the UK. 2011 was the 40th anniversary of the liberation of Bangladesh um, and so there was a lot happening in the area uh, in terms of celebrations, cultural events connected to, to the liberation of Bangladesh. There's a monument in this park which is a, a replica of the monument in Bangladesh in memory of uh, the martyrs of language movement. The Bengali nationalist movement started off as the Bengali language movement. Um, so the, the language movement was a, um, perhaps a, a springboard for, for the nationalist movement that uh, ultimately you know, gave birth to Bangladesh in 1971. The importance of language was always important throughout the reason when I was meeting with people uh, and talking with people about Bangladesh and the liberation of Bangladesh, that goes back way before 1971 um, and how um, essentially liberation was um, a, a, partly a war to preserve uh, the, the, the Bengali language. We thought that people wherever they live they would like to keep in touch with the country they come from but also they would like to keep alive with their language, literature, culture, history. So that's how we started, you know, so that we should have some books and materials uh, in uh, the Bengali languages so that uh, the local community can be in touch with, the, with their culture and heritage. The first room that you walk into is a display of books. I felt it was important that the first room that you come into is about language um, and everything that is contained in that room is connected to language. Since 1972 in up to uh, 2012, over 40 years, the second and third generation, their mother tongue is not Bengali anymore. They're reading, writing, thinking, everything in English. Although their parents are speaking language, maybe they are also reading in Bengali. But the younger people, they are not reading so much. I mean, maybe reading, but not the literature. I think I felt that the idea of storytelling through film was going to work well for this, partly drawing on, um, uh, on Bengali cinema um, and the importance of Bengali cinema um, uh, and contemporary uh, uh, Bengali film um, and drawing on sort of traditional tales as well. So you wanted to do something about generational conflict and then um, that meant looking at um, the kind of viewpoints of people in their 50s, 60s and then also uh, you know the kids nowadays and that's and you know the story evolved from that really. We felt that the idea of creating a story which in many ways was a very accessible story uh, which uh, was a very is a very watchable story was was really important that it was something which whatever generation uh, might connect with or they might connect with some some element of it um, so um, so that was really how the idea of um, creating two two parallel stories or two stories that mirror each other one set in the 1970s one set now in 2012 came about it was really important to go around the area, journeys to the local cash and carries, Brick Lane. You know, it's full of colour and exotic cornucopia products and whatever. And he thought this is an interesting set, you know, location. So that's, I mean, that, you know, that's the way it kind of evolved. 
Action! My name's Gavi. I'm going to be playing Mohib, and Mohib's quite shy and innocent young man. And he's he wants to be a poet when he grows up. Straight away, boys. Then you'll get a break, all right? Twenty-five on camera, please. Anchor. Matt's came up with this idea of how society changes over time, so how sort of tradition, some traditions stay within that society. So he thought he'd look at sort of the Bangladeshi culture and that sort of um, respect that they have for their for their for their culture and for their. Um, for their elders, I guess. Okay, and cut. All right, thank you. <laughs> My name is Mojin Aziz, also known as Naga. Um, I'm playing the gang leader in Give To Me The Life I Love. My role is, uh, so I'm, I'm basically a leader. I have a lot of influence on other people in my gang, and I influence them to do bad things, such as rob fish. And you found your uh, rotting jackfruit. Well, Matt was saying I've got to, he's just given me some lines. <laughs> which is this Katal um, poem. Yeah. Well, I think it's a song, it's a well okay. song. He wants me to serenade <laughs> this is the, <laughs> the jackfruit, <laughs> which is a very famous fruit in Bangladesh. The constraints of 10 minutes or so meant that I didn't... We, I wanted to explore the character more. How did he get to this situation, this old man, this kind of eccentric man who um, sings songs uh, to fruit? You know, um, and so kind of had this idea of taking it back to when he was a similar age to the boy in the story, 1978. And that gave us a, some scope to look at some of the issues that had confronted the Bengali community in the 70s, and that made for me a, a, you know, a, a, a complete cycle. You know, you've got contemporary, a, a, a contemporary film and a film set in 78. So we could see the, the journey of that character from 15 to, to in his 50s. All right, let's call it. Yeah. My name's Shakir, Shakir Ali. Most of the lines that we're doing, we're improvising on it as well, because some of it he didn't, get, he didn't fully understand, like, the Asian youth lingo and whatnot, and how we speak, because we do mix it up a little bit with Bengali and English, you know, but he didn't understand how we did it. Whatever a project I've worked on uh, in the past, um, I've, I've, I've always been an outsider. I've not been a part of uh, the community that I've ended up um, collaborating with or a community that have ended up participating in a, a project. I'd say there's always kind of difficulties for, for me, yeah, just in terms of feeling like I have enough of an understanding um, to actually then find some way of moving forward with a, a project. Okay, so guys, we're waiting on a sound mic coming. We so all um, want to reflect on the Bangladeshi culture. How was it in the past? Mm. How it is coming up uh, presently? Well, I think it was a lot harder in the 70s, to be honest, because let's say when my parents or my parents' parents first came to this country, it was very difficult for them to even be accepted in society. But right now we've reached a stage where the younger generation are starting to under understand themselves a lot better in terms of equal races, equal opportunities, equal chances. So this film does reflect that. I think it's good filmmakers using East London, involving young people and the different generations. And cut. Give to me the, the, the life I love. It feels quite different as a project to many projects that I've worked on before. Um, not in the process that has led uh, to, to the outcome. I think the process has been quite similar to the way that I've worked on other projects, whereby um, I go somewhere, um, I start to find out about that place and the community that inhabits that place, um, and finding out about the things that are important to the community that inhabits a place. I wouldn't say that the final uh, outcome of the project necessarily feels like a final outcome. It feels like it could go in a lot of other different directions. 